Hi everyone and welcome to Sit in It for a Bit with Arne and Carlos and we are as always your hosts Arne and Carlos. What's and going we, on? We're out of training. Yeah. Yeah. Because we haven't done this since before Christmas yeah. and I think we have tried and tried and tried yeah. now for how many times? Well we've restarted three times <laughs> and we kicked Helmer out so Helmer and Frey are now in the kitchen and we've closed the door oh, and so uh, I told Arne this is gonna be trouble because they are gonna see a moose and they are gonna start barking and then Helmer is gonna start crying because he's not with us but we'll try it. Or the ice fishers. There are people fishing yeah. on the ice. Yeah, it'll okay, be... Okay, let's try again. <laughs> it'll be exciting to see what happens. Anyway, welcome to Sit In It For A Bit. Uh, it's been a while since we were here. Uh, we haven't done Sit In It For A Bit since Christmas. No. Nope. And we've been away for a while, kind of uh, recharging our batteries. And talking about recharging, Carlos. Oh, yeah, yeah. We need to make it a little bit cozy here. Yeah. So we've got candles that I'm going to light. Uh, you know... Uh, not, not that one? Oh, no, that's true, yeah. <laughs> we are going to light the candles and uh, look at what we got for you guys. Not to freak out anymore when I start lighting candles. These are our battery run and they go on remote control. And I can even dim them or uh, make them kind of... Uh, you see that? That is so cool. It's so cool. Yeah. We have those candle candle holders on the wall and the candles are really close to the wall. So we haven't used them much because you have to keep an eye on them all the time. Yeah. I think they are made for like old houses in concrete or yeah. something because they can't light them in a wooden house. No. But now. Now, yeah. You can have a lot of this in the house and yeah. just use the remote control. So in your so honor today, we put the candles on the uh, candle holders that are on the table. Normally, we will not do this. These are just going to go on the wall uh, hangers. We just have to show you that we're responsible. Exactly. So uh, <laughs> from now on, uh, whenever you see a video with us, uh, the candles are going to be run by battery. And then uh, in our private light, life, I will light as many candles as I want with matches without even uh, thinking about it, right? We even use this one. Yeah. This is the, like, the lighter. I don't think it's stylish to walk around like No, it's not with. so chic as this. Maybe in the oven, but not the candles. So, but we're going to do this behind the camera, when the camera is off. off. And when because the camera is... Because we don't want to have, what to say? We don't want to give you sleepless nights. No. And we don't, we don't need more tutorials yeah. in how to light a candle. And if you wonder... <laughs> because we got them. <laughs> yeah, right. And if you wonder what we're talking about, we're talking about the episode that we did last year on Christmas when I took a, a match and I put it back in after I had lit it. The wrong way. The wrong way and the whole thing burned. Um, I'm trying not to do it anymore that way. I'm trying not to put the lit match back in, but you know, hard habits or Hab uh, what do you say? A Habits. Bad not. habit is hard to break. Break. But there you go. But this, yeah. this is so safe. Yeah. See, and and we can do this, whatever you know. We won't get burned. So yeah. But I think they're actually so cool. They are. So yeah. now, now I want to have more of this for yeah. the candle holders. That is not safe. And uh, so. so before we continue sitting it Oops. for a bit, I just want to dim these a little bit because I love it when they flicker like that. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> that is just spectacular. That's so cool. Yeah. And you know, the coolest thing is, you can, yeah. as long as you buy the same brand of candles, because you buy as many candles as you want, and then you buy one remote control. You can walk from one room to the other. And, and you can light your all candles the candles with one remote control. Which I is ordered really six cool. more. I know. So, electric candles run by battery, and I keep shopping uh, candles in Sweden. And as I said, these candles on the table are always going to be real. Uh, this is just for you guys, uh, you know, for... Because we want to make it cozy. Yeah. But we don't want to scare people. Exactly. So, so Arne... Um, what else is new? Yeah, what else is new? So this weekend is a very particular one here in Norway. Um, it is a garden bird counting weekend. Believe it or not, that is a thing in Norway. It takes place uh, this time of the year. And uh, you guys know, because Norwegians invented slow TV, uh, where they filmed, uh, remember the Hurtiruten for six days? Yeah. I told you this was not going to work. But now he's upstairs. Moose, moose. Moose, moose. Yeah. Anyway. It's background music. Yeah, it's going to be background music today. 
Let's so, focus in so anyway, we invented Slow TV here in Norway, and uh, a few years ago they started with Gardenbird County Weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've never done it before, but it's so cool. So what is it, Arne? It's, I think you have to count birds, like you can decide how many times you want to count the birds mm -hmm. during a day. Yeah. But you have to write down how many you find of each bird. Yeah, and at the same time as well. At the same time. So like if you do it like at 12 o'clock, you can wait until like 2 o'clock maybe or yeah. 1 You can do it as many but you need, times as you like. But you need to count the birds at the same time. So, you know, you want to, what, what they want to know here is like how many of that bird, how many. Yeah. So if you see like more than one bird of one species, that's a good thing. You have to count everybody, yeah. all of them. And then like if you, if you have five, uh, what you got blue tits at yeah. 12 o'clock, but you have 10 at one o'clock. Mm -hmm. 10 is the number you use. Correct. So you always use the highest number. And this is going on for two days Yeah. Now. And after the weekend's over, we send our, uh, our data uh, through a website. It's all registered. And hopefully all of Norway is doing the same thing. Now, when we, uh, when we decide we're going for something, uh, we go all in. So um, this weekend uh, we have a really prepared uh, today, uh, just before starting to film this episode, we went shopping yeah. for groceries slash bird food. And we filled all the bird feeders. Oh, you already did it? I did it because oh, they, have, they need some time to get yeah. used to it. They need to, like the rumor has to spread. Yep. So they can tell each other there are food in those. And we are ready to do the binoculated. Because so. we, the bird feeders are not close to the house, so sometimes it's really hard to see the birds, like especially the, the ones that are more or less the same. Mm. Yeah. Dumpap. Yeah, but the bullfinch. Those you can spot. Mm -hmm. And this morning there was a crowd of, of them. I didn't wow. count them. But we have this in case, so we can sit there and try to see the difference on the... So, yeah, and we've stacked up with a few books. Uh, we've got uh, one from uh, our publisher, Kaplan Dam. It is a book on birds, so that we, you know, in case there's something we don't recognize, we may find it in here. Yeah, there are some we don't know the name of because they yeah. all they look so similar. Yeah, this is a really nice book, but it takes time to find the bird. Yeah, we also have the one with sound somewhere. Mm -hmm could use that maybe uh, and then it may be a little bit silly but we did bring out our own bird book that we did in 2016 the reason for that is we've got an entire chapter here on birds in the garden yeah, and, and we have the english names yes and they've got the yeah well not in this book because this no, is the, the, the Norwegian one book. but here let's see here on pages 70 and 71 you've got the birds from the garden and we have kind of, even if it's a designer bird, uh, we still try to get the essence of the original <laughs> one. So if we don't recognize them from the drawings, we may recognize them from the knitted version of them. But when you do bird watching, yeah. of course, you have to pull out all the books you have. Mm. And I have to say, we were very trendy, weren't we? I mean, we did, we did garden birds before they decided that we should count all garden birds. So that's... Because we've been counting birds for a long, long time. We have, yeah. Yes. So we are in a hurry today. When we finish this podcast, we're going to have lunch and then we're going to put on some uh, clothes and then we're going to go out and uh, count birds. And that's what we will be doing um, for some part of the weekend. I don't think... I mean, I want to go all in with the preparations, I but I going. don't... You know me, I'm not the person who will go outdoors and freeze. No, that's why we have this one. So we can do it from indoors. That's what is my oh. plan. Oh, I thought we were doing it from outdoors and then no, zooming in. No, because some of them, they run away when you get out. It's only the, the little gray mm. ones, they stay. But the bullfinch, oh, okay. every time you walk by, they're gone. Oh, okay. So, so I think we have yeah, to I know in. that, but I was thinking we have to go out. Okay, so it's be suddenly become even more appealing. Uh, we're going to be sitting uh, indoors. So we're going to camp in our living room I, So upstairs. one can look and one can count and the yeah. other one write down the numbers. Yeah, I believe the bedroom window would be the, the best. The bedroom window upstairs. Because that upstairs. really gives an overview of the entire garden and there are no leaves on the trees, on the you birch see, there's trees. There's not much going on in this place. So no. this is the highlight yeah. of the next two I thought days. we were going to be outside hiding behind the bushes. I'm not hiding behind the bushes. No, you did a lot of that when we were not in... Not in this weather. Have you realized how cold it was this morning? It's not cold. But it's windy. It's windy, yeah. You know, what I was thinking when I walked the dog this morning, 
I walked Helme, Freya doesn't walk, she don't like it, but I had to walk Helme. Well, she walks if I walk. Yeah, she doesn't walk if we not all the four of us, mm. because she don't want to leave the house if you're not with us. Mm -hmm. But Helme, he doesn't care, he likes to walk. He does. This morning it was, I looked at the thermostat, what's that? The thermometer? Thermometer, it was on minus five Celsius. So minus five Celsius is around uh, 30... Fahrenheit or something yeah, like that's that. That's nothing in some in winter. No, no, not at all. So it's unusual warm in a way. But cold because but it it's was windy, windy and humid. So yeah. it was like you know, like in New York winter. Yeah. Or Copenhagen in the winter. Yeah. Also I know. in the winter. That's it what we cold. try to that's what we try to explain a lot of times. Uh, but people don't understand. And I think that you can only understand it if you live in a cold place. But um for us uh, here in Norway, we've had right now, the, for the past few weeks, we've had very mild weather for yeah. Norway. And windy. And windy, yeah. So, so but, but some days have been sunny and mild without any wind. So those days when the weather has been um, around uh, one degree uh, plus more. one Celsius. Which is up to six one day, yeah. which is warm for a week. Which is around 45 plus in Fahrenheit. Yeah. When you have that kind of temperature here and we say that it's mild, it's because the, the the temperature here in our part of the world is very dry. There's actually no wind normally. and there's no humidity normally. And there's still no humidity, but there's wind now. But when there's no wind and it's four degrees and it's sunny, you can actually sit outside and take off some, some of your clothes um, and, and warm up in the sun because there is no humidity and there's no wind. Um, and then when it gets like today, which is around minus five Celsius, which is around 20 it something. It was raining a little bit and it's very windy. That actually feels like minus That's cold. 20 because yeah. the wind makes it cold. But nothing is normal anymore. Yeah. So uh, what we're trying to explain is that um, just because we have snow in Norway doesn't mean that it is colder than uh, in other places that don't have snow. Um, and uh, minus, uh, minus 20 Fahrenheit is different depending on where you are in the world. Mm. If you live in an area which is humid and windy, or if you live in an area which is dry and sunny like ours. So, But this Christmas we didn't go skiing. No, not at all. That's the second time maybe in about, yeah, last years. That's been, true, yeah. The second Christmas where we didn't go skiing and we, we, we still haven't. haven't yeah, we haven't taken out our skis and we're walking we're walking with the dogs down a road that we do in the woods, our road in the woods that we usually do. And in the summer, we never walk there in the winter. No, because there's so much snow People and there's skiing. ski tracks. So you can't yeah. walk on the ski tracks. So but this, this year, we can walk. We can walk because there's hardly so, any so snow. So far, it's been very strange yeah. winter. And it worries me because when, when we get warmer winters with little snow, it means we get uh, rainy oh. and wetter summers. Usually if we get like a really harsh winter, we've gotten a great summer after that. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a science to that. I think <laughs> no. it's just superstition. It's, yeah, but, maybe superstition. But, it but would be. sometimes it happens. Yeah. But I'm, I'm worried about the plants in the garden. Yeah. Because we need a lot of snow to cover up the plants so they don't freeze. Mm -hmm. So it will be interesting to see what happened this spring. Yeah, very interesting. So, so yeah, so that's what we've been doing for the past uh, few weeks. We've been worrying about <laughs> our garden, taking dogs, taking the dogs on walks, yeah. uh, preparing ourselves for uh, the bird uh, garden bird counting day, which is upon us, and just chilling out and um, kind of um, yeah, recuperating after a really heavy December. Yeah, December is always super busy. And then we always tend to crash afterwards. So, um, and if anybody wonder if we had a lot of cookies for Christmas, we didn't. No, because we ate them as they came out of the oven. Exactly. We had a few left for mm -hmm. Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. The skurul, the krumkake. Yeah, the krumkake. Because you fill them with that the cloudberry cream, so we had those. But we had. I had one. I had a few more, yeah. but I didn't have, I didn't have the others, the others. No, I was so fed up by cakes on the Christmas. Yeah. Day. So what happened last year was that we did our, our um, Christmas podcast every day. And then on the Sundays, we did all the seven cookies that we were supposed to get in the box. <laughs> However, what kept happening was that the cookies kept disappearing. They didn't stay in the box for a long. Yeah. So we had to make more. And so by the time we had all the cookies in the box, we probably baked like each cookie four times, yeah. uh, we were fed up. But they were so good. 
until we got fed up. <laughs> and so we didn't have any cookies for Christmas at all because we were completely fed up. And we didn't finish the folk costume, the jackets. No. So because when, we, we took them out and then we had people coming over, so we had to take it away again. So yeah. it was only the bag that went in and out from the room where we should do the yeah. sewing, actually this room. And I think now... We read the instructions though. We read the instructions, so we know like what to do now, the first steps. Yeah, so you guys, we photographed ourselves on Christmas Eve and we were only wearing our uh, vests and then the scarves that we got each other for... Um, for Christmas Eve. That was the only new thing. Yeah. And actually, uh, because of the calendar that we recorded last year, so our calendar last year, if you didn't watch it, uh, we gave each other a little token every other day. So Arne gave me 12 tokens and I gave Arne 12 tokens. And that meant that this Christmas, we didn't give each other, or this past Christmas, we didn't give each other any other gifts uh, on um, on Christmas Eve. Because no, we, we kind of had given 12 gifts each and we thought that, it was enough, and uh, usually we we do we do what, what what you know what kind of gifts I like the most the experiences the things yeah. we do together that is for me um, the best Christmas. So we got gift. a gift. Then. We got lots of well, we get lots of gifts every year because we you know whenever we do something together that for me is more valuable than you getting me something I don't something actually you don't need. need. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what people... So, and, also the, and also doing the calendar and, and doing the little tokens for each other and then explaining why. I thought that was um, more of a symbolic thing, yeah. which I really enjoyed as well, because there were a lot of well thought of gifts. I think we should start soon. We should like, you should have your 12 sweater, I should have mine, and yeah. we should start next to year. fill them again. And we should do it from now, mm. because then we won't remember until quit. It would be a true. surprise for everybody. Mm, yeah. Because last, we have to use those now for every Christmas. Yeah, and last year we started filling the little sweaters in October. Yeah. In order I, to get everything I ready think it's in time. It's time to start now. Mm, it is, yeah. So So you guys are probably wondering, there's a lot of things we're gonna you know, you're probably wondering. I mean for example, what have we done since uh, we were here last? That's probably a question a lot of people have. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people people are also wondering, what are we gonna do about sitting in it for a bit? So I guess we're gonna tell you, right? But we need a little recap first. first what uh, have we done, Carlos, since last time? Okay, so let's start where we Started stopped. With... Uh, we, our final uh, podcast video was on uh, Little Christmas Eve, yeah. where we gave each other the little scarves, and then we... Well, that was Christmas Eve. No, sorry, that was Christmas, Christmas Eve. Eve. Christmas Eve. That was Christmas Eve. That, the day we gave each other the scarves before we went to to celebrate Christmas. Yeah. And then we've been celebrating and celebrating. Yeah, and taking COVID tests and more COVID tests. Yeah. So we had, how was it? I, I didn't hardly remember. First yeah. we took one. First we went to, to Sweden, this, actually. Yeah. And then we had to, no, then we were tested because yeah. they, they changed the rules. So you have to be tested yeah. on the border. So, for, so first we went to Sweden to celebrate Christmas with my parents, a Swedish Christmas. So we drove down and we spent a couple of days there. Um, and my dad, who is not a cook, and I, we prepared uh, the traditional Swedish uh, Christmas meal, uh, which was actually quite yummy, except for the parts of that meal that you don't like. No, but all the other things was good. Yeah, but, but there's the some anchovies. There's though. some anchovies and some herring that Arne doesn't like. Um, no, I don't eat that. So. It's Disgusting. But it was a nice time to spend with my parents. They were very happy because they're all alone down there. So it was nice that um, we could come and, and keep them company. Yeah. And they have some nice thrift shops. We would show later. Mm, I yeah. have some have something new in the dollhouse from mm -hmm. that trip. Yeah, so you're going to get to see that later on. Anyway, we had a lovely Christmas there and then drove uh, back to Norway to celebrate a second Christmas, a more Norwegian one. Yeah, and then we and had the COVID test again. Because yeah, but we had the first one at the border yeah. because when we went from Norway, sorry, from Sweden to Norway, the car that we were in, that we drove, was stopped and we had to take a test. And we were a little bit uh, concerned, obviously, but it came out negative, so that was great. And then we went home and we spent the night at home and we repacked our bags again and uh, because we were going to be celebrating Christmas for the second time uh, in, a, in a place uh, with uh, quite a few people, yeah. um, it was decided that um, everybody had to take a COVID test um, in, the, in the morning of the day we were going to go to be sure uh, to be sure that it was negative and that yeah. we didn't have COVID. 
So we took a second test, which was negative. And, yeah. And then we had the, the Christmas celebration, celebration there. No skiing. No skiing. And then we had another COVID yeah. test. So we had to take a third COVID test because uh, we actually went traveling um, and we went very far away. Yeah. We went on a holiday. We, had, we went to Los Angeles. Correct. To celebrate our friend's birthday. Yes. So we went with her and her family and we had a celebration for... Two weeks. weeks. And in order for us to get to Los Angeles, we had to take a third COVID test uh, 24 hours before or earliest, 24 hours before get it, getting on the plane. And uh, of course, you also need the certificate of vaccination. And we are both fully vaccinated and all boosted up as yeah. well. So uh, with that certificate and the negative COVID test, they allowed us to board a flight to Los Angeles. Then we had to wear the mask for 11 hours. First first down to Copenhagen and then we changed their plane and then we went like 11, 11 hours to California, to LA. Yeah. And that was hard, having was, that mask on for so long. Yeah. I was so, my throat was sore when we arrived in America and my tongue was sore. And, I, and you know I why? Off. Because you were breathing from your mouth instead of from your nose. I guess I was. Yeah, because of the mask. But when they gave us coffee and stuff, we just drank for a long time. Yeah. So we could have it off for a while, but it was hard. That yeah. was the hard part, but then the rest was nice. It's a strange rule because you have to wear your mask on all the time. But if you're eating and drinking, you don't have to wear your mask. So. All you need to do is eat and drink. Is hold a, a bottle of water in your hand and pretend like you're going to drink it every time somebody passes by. You pretend that's, to drink it, and that way you can that's kind, just cheating. kind of get away with not wearing it. Yeah, that's cheating. I never, I never. Did no, that. I didn't do that I either. Didn't do that. Not at all. I didn't do that. Never. At all. Not at all. No. But yeah, we had to do that. We had to wear our masks for uh, eleven hours, but it was worth it because we landed in Los Angeles. Um, and uh, hello, I mean, <laughs> winter in Norway, winter in Los Angeles. Angeles, there is uh, a big yeah. difference. I'll, I'll choose a winter in Los Angeles any day. A winter... During the day, it was a good summer in Norway. Yeah, and but in the evening, it was quite cold. chilly. Yeah, cold. Because we brought the dundun, the big dundun. Yeah, the well, yeah, that, that's the French word for the down jacket. Down jacket. Le dundun. Le dundun, because it was uh, very uh, cold, chilly in the evening. Yeah, and like when we walked the streets, like if you walk on the sunny side, it was warm. You can mm -hmm. wear a t-shirt, but if you went on this. Other side with the shady, shady, yeah. shady side. Yeah. Of the shady, the shady side. Side of the street. That's the shady <laughs> side. You don't so, want to go. No, you don't want to go on the shady side of no, the street. Never. Because that was shady. freezing yeah. cold. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, after an eleven-hour flight, we landed in uh, Los Angeles and were, you know, in another time zone for the first time in two years. And oh, no, we went to Iceland. That's, that's also another time zone, but okay. nine hours. But, but the, hours. Yeah, but the time zone between Iceland and uh, Norway is two hours. It's the nine. time zone between Los Angeles and Norway is, is uh, or the difference More. is nine hours. Yeah, so that, that was hard. Yeah. Anyway, we landed in Los Angeles and we went to pick up the car. Uh, and because we were six people and a lot of luggage, because one of the people in our party was a four year old child. So there's a lot of luggage. So we rented some sort of a minibus that I really wanted to drive, but I didn't have insurance, so I couldn't. I mean, I the, didn't want to drive it, the it rental, was too big for me. Yeah, the rental was done by one of the people in our party and mm -hmm. only he and his daughter were allowed to drive it because of the... I'm so happy uh, yeah. for that because I don't like to drive big cars when yeah. they are in strange well, places. Well, or this, wasn't places. A, this wasn't a big car, it this was, was a, a bus. bus. Yeah. And so we got on our bus with all our luggage and we drove out of Los Angeles and into Palm Springs. And we lived in a very nice house, one of those, I think they're more like iconic, yeah. like a very, what do you call it, 50s, 60s yeah. style, very cool. We stayed in a really nice. beautiful uh, villa from the 50s or 60s, probably from the 50s in Palm Springs. And uh, it was all, the whole thing, I mean, the house was from the 50s. The neighborhood was from the 50s. Yeah. There were vintage cars in some of the driveways, which was, was so really inspiring. nice. Really nice. Place. Beautiful. And then the house itself was all furnished in uh, mid-century uh, furniture. Um, and then the kitchen appliances, all the all the, the stove and the oven, all that was, even that was vintage. Yeah. So it was original. all original. 
And that was a little bit uncomfortable from time to time. For me, I think it's scary with those gas ovens because we're yeah. not used to it. More scary than this. Yeah, because you, I'm, I'm afraid the whole house will explode. Yeah. It was like, that. that is scary, but I, I got used to it. Yeah, and because we were traveling d during COVID, we realized or we figured that we wanted to be um, more careful than what we would have been if we were traveling, you know, outside of the pandemic in another time. So uh, we stayed in places uh, like this, this house, which had a kitchen so that we could cook in as much as possible. So we weren't going out to that many restaurants no. at all. Uh, but, you know, cooking at home. It was nice in Palm Springs. The house had a swimming pool. Yeah. So in the daytime, we could linger um, and sunbathe and uh, swim. Um, and then in the evenings, it got cold. So we could cuddle up in front of the fireplace inside the living room. So it was nice. It was a strange New Year's Eve. Yeah, in Palm because Springs. Because we, we, we had to watch our king when he did his speech that he yeah. always do on New Year's Eve. And that is like in the evening in Norway, but yeah. that was like early in the morning. So it was strange sitting there in our swimwear, listening to the king. Yeah, usually it's at 7 p.m. <laughs> and you're all dressed up because you're ready to celebrate New yeah. Year's. And then you, you listen to the king's speech on TV. But this time it was at 10 in the morning. Um, so, but we had to listen to the king because course. that's what you do. Um, yeah on new year's eve and, and it was yeah and then we fell asleep strange. i mean we arrived just before new year's eve uh, anyway so we were jet lagged and tired so uh yeah we went to bed at 10 30 and i was not awake for for when the clock you know ticked from 11 55 to 12. although i've always thought that new year is I think it's a bit boring. The, the most boring and underrated or overrated holiday in the world. And it, it doesn't feel any difference <laughs> next morning doesn't, anyway. No, no, no. So, it's, so usually uh, for the past uh, 20 years, we've celebrated most of our New Year's at home alone, yeah. uh, had a nice meal. And then um, sometimes we've stayed up. Yeah. Sometimes we haven't. Sometimes we've had guests. Sometimes we've been alone. It's nice to have the good food and maybe watch something nice on TV or just talk about what happened yeah. last year and just recap. So it was an interesting so new year nice. uh, in Palm Springs. It's actually the second new year in 20 years that we have celebrated abroad the, yeah. together. The first one was in Mexico of some 15, yeah. 16 Then we were just like as well and we woke up in the middle of the night. Yeah. I thought there was a war or something. But on that one, we, yeah, exactly. On that one, we woke up because of all the fireworks. The fireworks. This time we were in Palm Springs and apparently uh, we missed the fireworks. I don't, I don't know. think they do firework in that part of Palm Springs. Mm -hmm. I think there was something about that these houses are so old. Yeah, also. maybe, yeah. I, I think there was something about that. I do remember that there were a lot of the sure. rules about being quiet all the time yeah. in the... In the um... But it was a nice neighborhood. It was, I yeah. can go back anytime. Mm. I liked it in yeah. Palm Springs. We loved it in Palm Springs. Then we went over to, uh, we drove over, for, well, we were done with Palm Springs. We drove over to Arizona mm -hmm. um, and stayed at a resort for a couple of days to go uh, on a hot air balloon, which was, was cool. It was on our friend's bucket list. So we figured if it's on her, you know, and it was her 60th birthday. So, so we did it with her. So we did it. And the funny one about that was that two weeks before that, we were watching Escape to the Chateau on TV. And uh, the couple that are right now, it's, it's a, a show about a couple and a British couple that are renovating a chateau in France. Um, and they got on a balloon and to see the property from the air. Yeah. And I said to Arne, well, this is something that I know we'll never do as no, long as we, I we, we both agreed. We're, we're never going to do that. Yeah, but we did. <laughs> Two weeks later, we Two, were up, we were in, up in a balloon. But it was cool. I can do it anytime now. I, I thought yeah. it was very fun. It was so, it's almost a meditation. It thing. is, yeah. It was very quiet, even if there was a lot of people in that basket it was still quiet yeah. in a way and what i enjoyed was the, yeah i enjoyed that the balloon uh, went up slowly so when it started yeah. to go up in the air i wasn't even aware of that for the first 30 seconds no. and then i realized that oh we are moving so so it was very very slow and um, actually i did not feel i did not feel scared in any way i didn't look down because then i would have freaked yeah. out but i looked out <laughs> On the landscape. Yeah, so we flew. We flew across the Arizona desert for like an hour, yeah. and that was a that was a birthday thing that we did for our friend. But also, like a, you know, an experience. Again, experiences are the best trips. Yeah, and so then we love that. After that, we went back to 
California to LA. Yeah. Which I really enjoyed. We've been in Redondo Beach, but that... We that was in 2019, yeah. yeah. But we've never been in like these places that you were here about, like Melrose and Melrose yeah. Place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and was Hollywood. that Hollywood and those places. So we, that was actually very nice. And mm -hmm. it was so different from what I was imagining. Yeah. Because I thought it was like, like high buildings, like New York. But yeah, no, it, this no, was no. like Mexico City or somewhere in South America. Yeah, it felt it really so cool, yeah. Cool. We, we stayed in West Hollywood. Again, we had a place with a kitchen, so we cooked and we made all our meals. And But West Hollywood was nice because we could walk everywhere. Mm. And uh, yeah, we didn't feel, we, we felt safe all the time. I mean, we wore our masks and whenever we went indoors, we, we had our masks. And whenever we had to show our certificate of vaccination, we did. So we had no problem yeah. getting into places, to museums and things. But it's really nice to get out again, and I think, LA was a nice place to go to. Yeah, and, and also we went um, we went to see one of the shops that sold our clothes when we were in the fashion industry, mm -hmm. and that was really nice. It was actually very inspiring to see what was in the stores again. And actually, we talked about maybe what if we go back to the fashion industry, mm, that would be or nice. maybe we yeah. produce a few things for sale just to have a little bit of that world yeah. because. I felt I missed it when we were in the shop. Yeah, so what, like 20 years ago when we started in the fashion industry, we designed and manufactured and then we sold it, the, the things we designed. We sold them through trade shows to stores. So the buyers of all these really great stores in the world would come and buy our line. And one of the first stores that we had in LA was Ron Herman, which is in on Melrose in West Hollywood. And uh, it was really nice that we actually were staying very near the store and we could actually go in and have a look. Because we've never been there. so Yeah, no, never. It was nice. There was like a lot of nice knitwear. And actually I miss, in a way I miss, to just do a design and work yeah. with people who like those producers who are really good mm -hmm. at what they're doing. Yeah. And sometimes I miss it. And it was very inspiring to yeah. see. And another one, another one of the uh, stores that we used to sell to H. Lorenzo, we actually passed by that one too. So it's really nice seeing, having a look, quick glance at the window of that store. Um, so very, very cool. It was kind of, it was, well, it was nice. It's like you went back to your, our old days. Yeah. Way. And then we did something that we really needed to do that we haven't done for two years and which is what inspires us and gives us impulses. And it's very important for designers to get all that, you know, all those impulses from outside. See what's going on. See what's going on and get a feel for for stuff. And that was actually going, we went to the flea market on sun, on a Sunday in West Hollywood. Yeah. That was really great. I think that was so nice because there was so many cool people walking around. Yeah. You could see those people who like, they had a little bit of homemade, a little bit of old, a little bit new. Mm -hmm. And the way they put these things together, yeah. it's very inspiring to, to watch. So we, we have a lot of inspiration. Yeah, so we go to the flea market partly to see if we can find something cool for us or for our design work, but most importantly to observe other people mm. and to see, you know, the cool people. And uh, I mean, usually, and I mean, this applies everything. Um, you know, you can you can put together a very expensive outfit, and you can get a you can pay a stylist to put together a very expensive outfit for you, or you can go to the most expensive store and buy the most expensive uh, designer wear. Uh, but, you know, money or having all that money or spending all that money doesn't necessarily buy you taste or style. It just buys you a look. And looking at these really cool people and how they will put together an outfit, something vintage, something from um, a craft store, something from a very cheap secondhand store, and then maybe something from the high street, that's an art. And that's the art of style. And that is something you need to be born with. Yeah, you don't, you don't, you can't buy that. And that's, it's always interesting. Yeah. So it's we took a couple of, of secret pictures of a couple of really cool <laughs> people. Yeah. Uh, wearing some really cool stuff and uh, it's the first time we've done that for two years. Yeah. So that was nice. We didn't buy much. Nothing. No, we I'll, buy we'll, I'll be buying like stickers. stickers or I bought some stickers. From the art, for the art journal. But mm. it was, that was nice because... Much, but it's nice to look at stuff. Yeah. You don't have to buy all you see, but it's nice to look at. 
things. And those stickers were nice because uh, th we bought them directly from the designer yeah. or the guy that was the illustrator. So he, was, was nice. he was at the flea market selling his own stickers. So that was really nice. But we did bring home a few things. Not much this time. We did. Yeah, we did. We bought a pair of applique for, or uh, candle holders for the wall. Again, hence, they were too close to the wall, so they need those. Hence, we have the uh, these. The electric they have mirror. And actually, they're from Palm Springs, um, from a vintage store in Palm Springs. They're mirrors, and and they're in silver. Not silver, silver, but there's it, the color is silver. Yeah. And it's like palm inspiration, yeah. so it's very Palm Springs. So that's a nice souvenir. Mm -hmm. What and else did we bring? My puzzle. I did. A, oh I, yeah. I bought a puzzle. I haven't tried it yet, but. You can't leave a puzzle like that when you find it. Yeah. It's all about the Beetle and the Volkswagen. So a Palm Springs so, puzzle. Well, you got it in Palm Springs. Yeah. And we actually also bought some swimwear in, in Palm Springs. Very cool swimwear. Yeah. So I'll wait for the summer. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't want to show yeah. up. Uh, we'll that. show Arne, Arne off in his Speedos. <laughs> no, you don't want to see that. <laughs> <laughs> but the fabrics were nice because they were kind of very vintage <laughs> Don't promise that. No. no. And they matched the, the, my swimming, the, the swimming trunks that I bought. They matched the, uh, the parasol and the... Um, yeah, the little piece of fabric in the front had this very nice vintage kind of vintage look. look and then there's just a string in the back <laughs> no. <laughs> no, there's there's not I don't wear thongs are you crazy <laughs> so wait for summer you will see Carlos when you jump in the lake in his thumbs no you won't no. you'll never see me in that that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> well we're painting pictures now. yeah no I, I prefer uh, I prefer fabric I want fabric and I want a lot of it a lot of fabric yeah to cover as much as possible Thoughts, are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. No. So anyway, <laughs> we had a yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, nice. We had a lovely trip. We were very responsible. Uh, yeah, of we, course. We, we went always. to the the Getty Museum, the Huntington Library, uh, library uh, the the Getty Villa in Malibu. A lot of cultures. Fabulous. So we did some culture as well. Couple of meals in restaurants, not too many because of you know the world <laughs> you know. we're living in. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, and then we got on a plane and then we landed in Norway and then we had to take a new COVID test because in Norway, you have to take a test when you arrive at the, at the airport, they force you to take a COVID so test. So we took the test and, and we had to wait for like 15 minutes, 15 minutes and then they, we got an SMS or a message. Yeah. And then they said it. It was negative and then they scanned so the, the, the QR code they gave you and we could leave. So again, another, so we took like five COVID tests this year yeah. or this, uh, this Christmas and they were all negative and then we got home and here we are we've been we've been home for um, for about a month now yeah. um, and uh, things are uh, yeah and after we got back we've been home um, haven't done much ha well yeah we've done a lot but we've been home and we've been doing something yeah so we're not we're back to our uh, my memory is so bad I can't remember yeah. what have we done well not much we've been, <laughs> we've been home <laughs> We've been knitting, we've yeah, been we've designing. Been knitting some new stuff. Yeah, we've been knitting, we've been designing, I've been cooking, and we've been taking the dogs for walks. We haven't seen anybody really. Uh -huh. Our neighbor just got here a couple of days ago, so I guess we're gonna see her soon. I think but we have, we have we've been working. Oh, we're, we're, what? We went to visit your brother. Oh, we went to see my brother. Oh, I forgot the sleeve to my sweater. You the did, one, yeah. the, my brioche sweater that I'm working on. I brought it to America and I almost finished the sleeve. Actually, I finished finished the body. I yeah. sewed the the shoulder and made a rib around the neck, and then I was almost finished the sleeve. Mm. And I left it when we yeah. went to see my brother. Yeah. So. So I started the second sleeve now. Yeah. So anyway, we'll go get that sleeve, and yeah. once we get the sleeves back, uh, you just finish that off. Uh, but no, I mean we've been home, we've been working. Um, there's always a lot to catch up on. Uh, in January, there's the end of the year. In our business, there is all the, you know, we don't have any new designs uh, or haven't had for a while. So you, we need to start bringing in new, new designs. Uh, there's always design work for Rowan because of the spring magazines. They usually need to come in at this time. So yeah, plenty to do. Um, and we have to take to look at the, our, the very important design work we're doing now with that organization. Yeah. Because 
this is a project. We we'll probably talk more about it later. Yeah, we can uh, we can mention it because it's not a secret. But uh, in Norway, there is a big well, one of the biggest uh, organizations for uh, mental health is the uh, organization for ADHD mm -hmm. or ADD, I think in um, in American. Um, and uh, we are we've been working with them now for um, for a few months. They are really fun to work with. Yeah. And uh, and we're going going to do a design for them um, here in Norway to um, because they have a lot of knitters in their organization, people that have ADD and also relatives of, of people with yeah. ADD. So, uh, so we're done with design and we're going. Yeah. To... So we have a we have a Zoom meeting soon to catch up. I have um, to go to Hillesvold, the yeah. yarn pr producer north of Bergen. Yeah, we're outside doing... Bergen because we are working with them again for these projects. And we're doing a piece for the ADD uh, organizations yeah. magazine. So so it's a great project and it's a lot of fun working with them and this is one that we've been uh, that we're going to be working on for a while now. I think it was nice because so. I have I have almost forgot everything about it while we were away. So yeah. it was nice when we got that email and it's like, "Oh, I've forgotten about that." Yeah. So but we have had already done the design work, so Absolutely. So that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Yeah. So we've been doing that. And uh, yeah, and, and uh, going back to our travel, um, it's amazing that we were able to go to Sweden, celebrate Christmas, go to Norway, celebrate Christmas, go to Palm Springs, um, Arizona, uh, and then again back to Los Angeles and then back to Norway and travel in a responsible way and not even getting COVID. That was amazing. Yeah. And uh, now we've been here catching up. But I think that 2022 will be a little bit more of a hectic year for us when it comes to travel. And yeah. I think we're looking now at the end of our stay at home um, thing. Yeah, I think we can avoid it in a way because like when, when life go back to normal, that's yeah. like part of what we're doing. Yeah, and we've got lots of trips planned. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk talk about them a little later. Uh, but anyway, we were doing a lot of design work and oh, yeah. uh, you have to, you have to even if we've already released these, you probably haven't seen them on camera yet, but you have seen them probably on our website or in our newsletter. But we want to show you the, uh, the year of the tiger because 2022 is uh, the year of the tiger. So we wanted to show you guys these really yeah. cool ones. So first we made this one. This, yeah. This is the the mitten. The mitten with the uh, it's the pattern is inspired of the the back of the tiger. Grrr, is, grrr, 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 grrr. Grrr. Yeah. So these are very cool, um, and these are uh, these are the original ones that we wanted to do for the year of the tiger, and then we wanted to do a hat. However, um, Arne went behind my back. I was um, working. Incognito. Incognito, because I wanted to surprise you. Huh. And you did. I, my jaw dropped. So I made the tiger head yeah. mitten. So Arne comes to me. Look, and I can be a tiger. Yeah. I am oh, the, tiger. You're the tiger. That's the Abba song. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it so was, that's the tiger mitten. It was quite unbelievable. I mean, Arne came to me uh, one afternoon and said, I know that. Um, uh, I know that I, uh, what was it you said? Oh yeah, I've been working behind your back and I did this. And then he put this in front of me and I, my jaw dropped. I, I think they came out quite cool. And they're they have, amazing. They're, they have to be like this. So when you walk around, you will see the tiger because mm -hmm. it, this way it doesn't, yeah. it wouldn't have worked the other way. So they yeah. are really, really cool. I know there's a thumb missing there, but yeah. So <laughs> wrong way. Wrong way. <laughs> wrong way. <laughs> there's no thumb. There we are. Uh, yeah, these are very cool, and um, and uh, it's kind of like painting with the yarn, isn't it? Yeah, it's so fun. It's... I also made a hat. Yeah, a tiger hat, but it's it's it is actually painting with yarn. Yeah, can you I guess think we would do a tutorial on the, on this one. We'll do a tutorial on the hat, but can you explain quickly how this is made? Yeah, you knit with two colors, so... no, never more than two colors, because there's a lot of carrying no floats and stuff so it's just messy so mm -hmm. you just knit with two colors and then you do the embroidery yeah after so this mitten here it was knitted in uh, black and white originally and then all the yellow or the mustard and the green and the pink is all uh that it, oh <laughs> i was I, oh i was like oh, wow. <laughs> burn it. i don't want to burn it but actually you can you can you can do this and <laughs> no, 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 no. it'll be fine so anyway yeah that, that's i mean they're very realistic. 
They're yeah. very realistic. Every time I like I walk into the room, when we have those on the wall where there's if it's dark in the room and we just light this. Yeah, because they're flickering. Every time I'm like, oh, what did we forget the candles? Mm. Anyway, what I was gonna say was that the yellow, the green, and the pink is in a duplicate stitch. And we've used the colors from our Norwegian wool, so from Rowan. So it's the, the mustard, the black, the white, and the green is also from the collection, the emerald green. The pink, however, we are launching pink this year later on, so there will be pink, mm. but right now there isn't. So for the green, for the eyes and the, and the, the thumb and the nose, it's so little of that, those yeah. colors. So if you have leftover yarn, it's actually better yeah, instead you, of buying a 50 grams. Yeah, you and you can just use DK uh, mm -hmm. yarn and it works just as well. But it's really fun because when you start, it's only, this one is only black and white mm. and you can, it's like you have, you see a little bit of the face, but that's when you start doing the duplicate stitch, that's yeah. when the tiger comes alive. I so do, I do this is something that was really fun to work it with. It was. I do think, Arne, though, I would love a hat in this as well. We can do that. Yeah. And, you know, this brings me to, this makes me think a lot of uh, animal, I love an animal print. I love an animal I know print. I love animal print. And uh, now this is not an animal print, this is an animal knit. And can you imagine a really chic uh, hat in, in leopard, but in knitted leopard instead of, We can you know, do anything. That would be so cool but... to have a leopard hat. But yeah, animal print is, is one of my favorites. And, I want and, this for my sweater. Yeah. And look at me, I'm, I'm completely clashing now, but it works. It works. It works. So anyway, these are on our website now. These are the new patterns that we posted um, at arnecarlos.com and you can get them there. So that's so. one of them the things we were working on mm -hmm. and we are working on a lot of stuff yeah and but now it's mo most bird watching yeah so now we're gonna go to our <laughs> bird watching and our 15 minutes are probably up no but uh, have to, what are we doing with sit and knit i know i know we're gonna talk about it, yeah. but I'm, what i was saying is our 50 minutes are probably up and a long time uh, ago, long time ago. Okay. uh yeah and uh, we need to talk a little bit about sit and knit for a bit because and we'll things are changing Things are changing. Now, before we do talk about what's going to happen, maybe a quick recap on uh, why we started sitting it for a bit. For those of you that don't know. Um, you we should tell it because my memory is gone. <laughs> yeah. Was it, it was because of the lockdown. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly. So um, before COVID or before the lockdown in 2020, we only did Sunday episodes. And those are always tutorials. And we haven't changed that. Those tutorials are still there. So every Sunday, uh, we post a new tutorial, so um, and we've done that since 2015. <clears throat> and then when lockdown came, uh, our trip to Australia got cancelled. Everything got cancelled, and we were stuck at home. Trip to Japan. Yeah. yeah. So, so we decided to uh, start sitting knit for a bit. But at the time, we called it the Quarantine Knitting Podcast, the Arne and Carlos Quarantine Knitting Podcast, and it was a daily podcast until we realized that we both had COVID, and um, you were Actually, okay, but I got really sick. I thought I had a bad call. Yeah. But then you got sick. Exactly. And then we had to check what was and, going on and you had COVID. Yeah. And then so. we stopped. We stopped uh, the daily podcast because I got very sick and I was out for three weeks and then I was out for almost a year. But after this, this was in March 2020. So um, again, we were very trendy. We got it <laughs> early. very early. Yeah. And um, we survived. And we survived. Especially you. Yeah. But anyway, after that, we, it took me a long time to recuperate. But from March until September, I was very sick. I was burned out. I had post-traumatic, uh, oh, post-virus syndrome and post-traumatic stress. I had a lot of stuff. And then in September, when I gradually started feeling better, we started again. Yeah. And then we called it the Sit In It For A Bit podcast which we did every week. And the podcast is actually not intended as a knitting podcast. It is um, just a catch up. Just to talk. Just to talk. And uh, people, they don't necessarily knit. They can embroider, they can crochet. They, some nothing. people don't do anything. Yep. We've got a lot of spouses that watch this with their partners as well, <laughs> non-knitting <laughs> spouses as we call them. So it's, it's for everybody. And, um, and we were able to do it um, last year, yeah. the whole year. But, but we didn't go anywhere. But we didn't go anywhere. And so. this year we have a lot of plans. Yeah. So um, what are we going to do? We've been We're thinking... to sit and knit. For a bit. For a bit. Uh, as long as we can. Uh, on the road. If we have to. If we have to. Or we can do a sit and knit for a bit from everywhere, actually. Yeah. 
And but but you know that when you when like when we do sit on it for a bit, we have to film it and then we have to download the episode and then it goes to Eric yeah. because he has to put that music in the beginning and stuff. And so it's not live. No, if it's live, it says live. Exactly. But I think most people know that. Yeah. And and what was I thinking? And so yeah. if we travel, say you go to a place and you stay in a hotel and you do the sit and it just to, have to do the episode, mm. maybe you don't have time to be in the hotel for so long that you can actually download the Correct, episode. Correct, yeah. So it may take time. So, but I think we can make it. We're going to try. One way or the other. If yeah. we stay in the place for a, a few for a day or something, then we can do it. So it can be interesting. It can be... A different background. Mm -hmm. It could be the Eiffel Tower or a or hotel room. Hotel room. Yeah. Or anyway, so that's so what it can be. It can be fun. Yeah. So we decided to try to do it as much as we can without skipping any Wednesdays. Um, we are going to be doing sit in it for a bit every Wednesday, uh, starting today and on until summer. Then um, we'll take a summer break um, because we have to have some holidays as well. So there will be a summer break uh, in the summer. Uh, how long? when we don't know that yet we haven't decided and then we're going to start it again in the fall and we're going to try to keep it going as much as we can mm -hmm. um if by any chance we cannot do a sit in it for a bit because we're too busy traveling uh we will let you know in advance that next wednesday there will not be a sit in it for a bit but we'll be back again in two weeks for example mm -hmm. um and as arna said we will do sit in it for a bit on the road when we're on the road and those podcasts may be a little shorter now. And already now we know if things are not changing again. We already have planned a few we trips do, yeah. already in yeah. April, I mm -hmm. think it is. April and May. And May. September. September. Yeah. So things are happening. Things are happening. We are resuming our knitting cruises um, yeah. if we can. I mean, at the, at the present time, we believe uh, because we were able to travel uh, safely, uh to the us and back we believe that we can do um, a cruise or a trip safely uh so we are gonna try to uh, start doing those again um and we also plan on touring in the us and bringing sit in it for a live sit and knit for a <laughs> for bit a live a bit. we're planning on bringing sitting knit for a bit live uh, to the us in october probably or november um and we're planning some tours in italy yeah, we're planning a garden tour garden in Italy tour for a group in Italy. That of would be knitters. Very nice. That would be lovely. So yeah, we've got plans. Whether we'll be able to follow through with all of these plans remains to be seen. At the present time, um, the situation is still a little bit um, up in the air. But it looks like... Uh, <laughs> now people can travel again in Europe I mean, and also in America. I think people can travel. Well, yeah. We look traveled and... We have friends in America who's yeah. traveling already. We're going to meet some also. Yeah, and now everybody we everybody we know is uh, has either had COVID and is yeah. recovering. Right now, a lot of people we know have with with small children. Yeah, they are now in lockdown and in their houses. Well, not in lockdown. They're no, sick. Is it? They are like not lockdown. What's it called? Quarantine. Quarantine. No, not even that. They're no, just, they're not quarantined they're, they're, anymore. They're in their house. Yeah, sick. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like, yeah, they have COVID and they're sick and then they get better again. And yeah, yeah it's no longer... We plan to go to see a niece, but then she texted us and said that both her kids had COVID. Which now. automatically means she and her husband will get so it. So we're well, not going so. there. Yeah. For sure. I think sooner or later we go back to normal again. Yeah. And then we can't sit at home every day anymore. Yeah, exactly. Even if we like it, we have to get out again. Mm. I guess that's yeah. part of the business. Yeah. So Omicron could be the silver lining that will uh, let us start traveling again. Or on the other hand, maybe something else horrible will happen and we'll have to go into lockdown again. Whichever way it is, we have to start planning and thinking, you know, uh, of a world that is a little bit normal. Otherwise, we would get caught by surprise. Yeah. And we can't have we that. Can't do that. So <laughs> as of now, we're planning trips and uh, we've cross our fingers that they are able to, that we're able to follow through. <laughs> and if we can, we can. And if we can't, we can't. Did you hear the, the dogs? Yeah, I heard the dogs. <laughs> Today Moose, I, Moose. Today I is losing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she started like barking like normal and then it was this high pitch. Yeah. <laughs> She's so excited. 
Yeah. I, I guess there's, maybe there's fishermen. Either the fishermen on the ice or our neighbor's dog. Um, <laughs> I withdraw the curtains, but Helmer knows how to open them. Yeah, he knows how to open everything. <laughs> that dog is uh, Houdini. Uh, <laughs> the most incredible thing is in our car. We have, we have an SUV and in the trunk of the car or the back of the car, we have this thing with, with bars so that he can't get through. Normally he can. And he hates being in the car alone. And so we try not to leave him. But once we had to go, both of us very quickly to the toilet. So we went into a gas station and we, we walked out. He was sitting in the front seat and we were like, how did he get there? Yeah. He managed to like move one of those things because they can go in. So he managed to open it. So he had like this small opening and then he was like, like Houdini. Yeah, he squeezed through. He done it two times. I, yeah. I really don't know how he get through there. Yeah. But, but yeah. now we have put on some, like we have put like, not ropes, but like- Some metal some things. Some things to hold them so he yeah. can't move them. But we try to avoid keeping him in the, in the car. And if he has to stay in the car alone for a few minutes, we take him out of the back yeah. and put him in the front seat because he's, that's where he wants to go when it's actually a bit worrying when he when he can get through these yeah, things know, because he crazy. can get stuck. So yeah, it's he's, crazy. He's he's a good dog. Yeah, but he he, he has a lot of strange things yeah. going on in his head. So we have yeah. to train. And he knows him. how to open curtains. He knows how to open doors. Yeah. The, yeah. The only door he can open is the one to the bathroom because that has a knob that you have to turn. Yeah. That he can't. Open. But the ones that have handles is no problem for him. And then we have to train him when we walk in the woods because we have to train him to come to us and go with us because if we meet other people, they can be, mm. it's, it's kind of, if you don't know the dog, he can be scary because he's big. Mm. So he has to learn that he, when we say walk behind us, he walk behind us. When we say now you're free, then he should run away. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're training him. Yeah. So yeah, lots of things to do. But AI is not dangerous. Mm, Helmer no. is not dangerous, but people can think he is dangerous yeah. because he's big. And also when you when you see something that you don't want him to be near, you need to be able to call him and he has to come. Mm. I mean, whether he wants it or not, he has to come and that's- uh, But he's learning. Freya does that and now he's learning too. So we are training him very well. So yeah, and our 15 minutes are up. Yeah. Now people uh, who are new may wonder, what are those 15 minutes? They've been talking for way more than 15 minutes. It's a gag here now, uh, it's like a running joke uh, because we want to fit in so much as we possibly can in 15 but minutes. I think it was 15 minutes in the beginning. It was, and then we, couldn't Almost keep, then we couldn't keep the 15 minutes and now we always say 15 minutes even if it is like- Maybe it never had been 15 minutes. Probably not. I don't know. Yeah, but we keep to 15 minutes and, and you know. Okay, so what should, we, should we just leave them and come back next week? Yeah, anyway, so <laughs> the final news yeah. is sit in it for a bit. We're trying to do our best to keep it going. Uh, we had a lot of emails and uh, it broke our heart. When we read a lot of the emails and we thought, okay, we cannot stop it. We need to keep going and we need to find a way to keep it going. We're gonna do our best. We're gonna to try to keep it going every Wednesday. We can't promise that's gonna happen. We will try also to do a few sit and it from for a bit on the road. If we can, we can't promise that either. But what we we'll can promise, what, what we can promise is we're gonna be doing our best and we'll see what happens. Yeah. So how about some uh, if you like our videos, thumbs up. And if you are on the mailing list, you will get the news before other people, like cruises and mm -hmm. stuff and some good and also our schedule and schedule and some good offers sometimes and put on the notification so you won't miss an episode yeah and that's it yeah so that's it i've done this for a while i know yeah. but uh, you did it so well thank you so thank you so much for watching and we will see you again uh, next wednesday and now um, all i have to do is turn off the candles that is so cool i love it <laughs> Bye. See you. Bye. <laughs>